And I'll tell you what, watching Trump get COVID really made me jealous for a minute of the people who believe in hell. Yeah, you know, like normally when atheists think about hell, we think about all the negative shit involved in fearing one might go there oneself or one's loved ones could go there for the, you know, petulant crime of atheism. But there are two sides to that coin, of course. While Christians very rarely admit it, it's got to be damn nice to believe that the people who piss you off are going to have their skin melted off by a demon forever. Right. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I, I don't believe that anybody has ever or could ever do something so bad they deserve hell. You know, by hell, you mean the typical Christian definition where one is tortured for eternity. No finite crime can justify an infinite punishment. That being said, the idea of divine justice is damn appealing. Right. Like, I mean, obviously, it's got to be nice to believe that when you die, you're going to be rewarded in the afterlife. But from time to time, it's also got to be every bit as nice to believe that the assholes of the world have a healthy dollop of punishment coming their way, too. And watching my news feed obsessively after that pumpkin colored asshole was flown to Walter Reed had me reflecting on that a lot. I mean, I know a lot of people were probably rooting for him to just die and. Honestly, if you want to minimize suffering, that's probably the right thing to root for. But I didn't want that. I wanted him to suffer for his crimes, and dead people can't suffer. Of course, as we all know, he almost certainly won't suffer either, and he definitely won't suffer commensurate with his crimes, right? There is only a vanishingly small chance that he'll wind up in prison and an even lower chance that he's going to wind up penniless and uninsured and sucking off Mexican immigrants to afford his overpriced medicine while his children rot in cages, which is what it would take to make it commensurate. You know, I, I don't even think there's a legal term for sentencing people to that, and that's sad. Right. It would be damn comforting to know that justice wasn't merely possible, but guaranteed, inescapable. Sure, he might avoid judgment in this world, but after he died, he would still have to account for his sins. I mean, I know it's weird to think of hell as a comforting thought, but it very clearly is. It's very clearly comforting to think that everything works out like a Disney story, even if Act 3 happens post-mortem. You know, atheists forget about that sometimes. When we think about what religious people get for their tithes, we think about the fear of death and how comforting that promise of immortality is, right? We think about the fear of an impersonal universe and how much nicer it must feel to think the universe cares about them and is willing to bend the laws of physics on their behalf now and again. We think about how overwhelming the randomness of one's fate can be and how soothing it must be to tell oneself that it's all part of some divine plan. When we address hell at all, it's usually just to toss an uncomfortable part of their theology back in their faces. But hell is a promise to the dues-paying Christian just as much as heaven, and we overlook that to our detriment. See, the most effective way to make atheists isn't through any argument. It's by replacing the shit they needed religion for in the first place. Really, uh, the better and more broadly available modern medicine gets, the less people rely on prayer for like the health of themselves or their loved ones. Yeah, I mean, they might still offer prayers because that's the nice thing to do when somebody's sick, but they don't rely on it. Now, eventually, the, the medicine reaches its limit. And since the prayers are bullshit, they're limitless. You know, they don't work, but they also don't admit that. So once science has gone as far as it can, a lot of people turn to the metaphysical version, even though it doesn't work. Obviously, the better the medicine gets, the fewer people that'll have to do that. And this is true across the board. People have an innate need to understand the world around them. The better and more accessible scientific answers can be, the less often people will have to settle for the religious answers that don't work. But eventually, you do reach a limit. No matter how much we learn, there will always be a frontier of our knowledge, and that's where religion can step in and offer up some bullshit that doesn't work. Along the way, you hit this important threshold. Right. It exists in different places for different people, of course. But there's a point way before infinite knowledge where a human can satisfy themselves with scientific answers and not resort to religious ones. I mean, obviously there is because for you and I, that point has already been reached. And, and the key to spreading atheism farther is bringing more people to that point. For some people, it's just a matter of teaching them the answers that we already know. For other people, we're going to actually have to like move our knowledge further along. But the goal is to reach that line. And intuitively, we know that, right? Like, like that's how we try to combat religion instinctively, by offering up better answers. But we have to recognize that across the board, it's not enough to satisfy just a person's need for knowledge. They also need control over their lives, right? That's why religion is so much more prevalent in poorer countries and poorer states. 
people forced to live in poverty don't have enough control over their lives and can't get all this swell modern medicine and shit. And so they're more likely to settle for the metaphysical version that doesn't work. The lie that offers them control and instead controls them. You know, to make a world right for atheists, you have to make a humanist world. You have to offer people these things and you have to get them across these lines. You have to give them knowledge. Yes, you have to give them control. Absolutely. But you also have to give them justice. Because if they're forced to live in a world without it, they'll choose the metaphysical version that doesn't work. If they aren't afforded a fair chance in life and they see cheats and liars and hedonistic pieces of shit like Trump constantly escaping justice, they will give up on the secular version. You know, a lot of people tell me social justice isn't an atheist issue. The hell it isn't. It's, it's, it's just harder you know, than most of our problems are to solve. It's a harder issue. And so a lot of atheists are inclined to hide from it. And you know what? That's their choice. I guess doing most of the job is better than doing none of the job. But if you get in the way of the people who are trying to do this part, you're not even helping anymore. You're just getting in the way.